My name is Belinda Rivera Lebron. I, I am a physician for the uh, pulmonary and critical care division. Um, I specialize in pulmonary hypertension and acute pulmonary embolus. I am the director of the uh, acute PE team uh, for UPMC. Um, and today we're going to talk about acute PE and specifically going over uh, risk factors and treatment options for acute PE. The key uh, clinical and biomarkers uh, for mortality risk in acute PE are uh, dated back to one of the registries that was the initial registry called the International Cooperative PE Registry that this was published back in 1999 um, and uh, it included a, a, a registry of over 1500 patients that they followed for about a year uh, in seven countries and this publication told us that things like having an age over 70, uh, systemic blood pressure of less than 100, tachypnea of uh, respiratory rate more than 20, uh, a, an increased heart rate of over 110, having cancer, uh, having uh, COPD, or having heart failure were all predictive uh, worse, predictive of worse outcomes in these patients. Uh, this was subsequently um, then verified in other registries and uh, a few years later uh, there was a calculator uh, for QPE that was developed. This calculator is called the PESI score, so PE score index. Um, and uh, what they did was that they uh, composed a calculator using some of the risk factors that were described in previous registries and they put it together for a calculator score of how, what was going to be your mortality uh, in 30 days after being diagnosed with an acute PE. Um, so in the P PESI score uh, there are things like again age, presence of cancer, systemic hypotension, uh, tachycardia, um, presence of chronic heart and lung disease, um, uh, were included and if you had none of these risk factors your score was zero uh, and your mortality in 30 days after being diagnosed with a PE was less than 1%. However, if you had uh, one of these uh, risk factors and your, your point score was one or higher then your 30-day mortality would go up to about 10-12%. Uh, so a significant jump. So this is uh, something that uh, we used in our uh, clinical setting in uh, knowing uh, who, who is at a higher risk factor of dying. And uh, therefore then we're more aggressive with the care of these patients. In terms of biomarkers that we use, uh, uh, two of the things uh, that we are in the lookout that we always order uh, for patients with PE are a BNP and a troponin. Uh, these two are, are used along with the PESI score uh, in deciding uh, who, who uh, do we need to be more aggressive and be careful about. Patients uh, with submassive uh, PE that we should consider uh, additional therapy other than the regular anticoagulation uh, should be patients with a uh, uh, mostly three things the a PESI score of uh, uh, equal or greater than one um, patients with uh, RV dilation or RV dysfunction on a CT scan or an echocardiogram and patients with a positive positive biomarker such as BNP and troponin in addition to those three things, you need to have uh, no contraindications to lysis. Local or lytic uh, mechanical therapy should be favored over systemic lysis. In patients with uh, massive PE, uh, we prefer systemic lysis if you don't have a contraindication to systemic lysis. However, if you do, because there is a decreased um, uh, milligram that we use for uh, local catheter-directed lysis, uh, then perhaps uh, this is an approach that could be considered uh, at that time. 
uh, the same with uh, mechanical embolectomy. If you do are hemodynamically compromised, uh, have a massive PE and require immediate uh, therapy and have contraindications to both systemic and local TPA, then an embolectomy or thrombectomy would be uh, the treatment approach here. Now for submassive uh, PE patients or intermediate risk uh, patients, uh, we uh, do not recommend uh, systemic lysis. Therefore, if those patients have a high risk of uh, uh, worsening um, hemodynamic compromise or uh, going into a hemodynamic uh, uh, compromise, then in those patients we could consider uh, uh, local catheter-directed lysis. We know that with therapy, um, uh, there is about a 70% clot dissolution um, after a week and about 100% clot dissolution after three months. Therefore, patients with an acute PE should be followed three months after their event uh, and their screening test would be an echocardiogram. If you have evidence of RV dilation or RV dysfunction, in the echocardiogram, then we need to pursue further uh, diagnostic testing for CTEF or chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension. Dose testing uh, uh, would be a VQ scan, a ventilation perfusion scan uh, to look for evidence of chronic clot um, and then pursue a right heart catheterization to diagnose the presence of pulmonary hypertension. Mm -hmm.